Thank you for joining. In the previous lessons we implemented explicit binding using the from query and from route attributes. In this lesson I will explain how to implement a POCO class and model bind it explicitly. On your screen is the diagram from the lesson when we implemented the DTO. Item number 5 on this diagram, to put it simply, represents a model based on a simple class. Let's open this file. This file is an example of a POCO which stands for plain old CLR object class. POCO classes are used in object relational mapping scenarios, such as entity framework in the context of net applications, which is exactly the same scenario we implemented in that lesson with entity framework. These classes don't have any special dependencies or methods related to database access or behavior. They simply represent the data structure without being tied to any specific database or data access framework. So this class solar system is a plain data structure that defines the properties of a solar system in this case, making it a POCO class, and it's written in pure C sharp as a class definition. This keeps it separate from any specific database or data access logic, allowing for clean and maintainable code. In the previous sections we used model binding with single parameters. What if we use a class to create a model object and link this object with the action methods properties? For that we can take the code from the previous lesson, which is quite simple but sufficient for testing. We will add one more parameter and name it mypoco. If we link this parameter to a poco class, such as the solar system model, this approach promotes code maintainability and separation of concerns. It allows you to work with structured data and provides a convenient way to handle and validate, for example, user input coming from the front end. Since we have all the required folders and classes, we can reuse the structure from our previous lessons. I will copy the solar system model class and rename it to mypoco. We can remove unnecessary items, leaving just two properties, and make minor modifications to comply with the action methods logic. These properties should align with the URL segments or query string parameters. Their names should follow the Pascal case convention, although NetCore will automatically convert the first capital letters to lowercase. Additionally, I will return a simple string from this class, which will contain all the properties involved in object creation. We can take advantage of the automatic calling of the toString method. The model class has been explained in detail in previous lessons. Please refer to those lessons if you require additional explanation of this class structure. The action method parameter also needs to be of the mypoco type. This part of the return statement in the action method will return mypoco class. Let's change the request type to post for both the method and postman. If we send a request now from Postman, we will get an error, indicating that the media is unsupported. In previous lessons I mentioned that if a value is not supplied for the parameter or if the parameter type is incorrect, it triggers a binding error. Also I mentioned the importance of the API controller attribute, which can skip the request body. Let's comment it out. Repeat the request and magic happens. We receive the required response. Implicit model binding for the POCO object works as expected. Now let's explain the Postman output. The first parameter is explicitly model bound to the query string parameters in our code, which is why we get 55. The second value is no data and it's coming from the part explicitly bound in our code to the raw data. Everything is correct. As for the response from the POCO class, the POCO object has no declared explicit model bindings. Since raw data is the first option considered for implicit binding by NetCore 7 before query string parameters, both 999 and no data were picked up from this part of the URL. Moreover, since no other values are provided, such as form fields or form data, NetCore skips all these options. In other words, if we do not specify explicit binding, it picks up data from the available source according to the implicit binding order. It's as simple as that. I will mark it as nullable to avoid errors if no values are provided. Before we see explicit binding, I want to emphasize that explicit binding for the request body is generally not recommended. There are several reasons for that. First, it's unnecessary. 
Netcore 7 is designed to automatically bind request body parameters to the appropriate properties of the action method parameters. It's quite capable of automatically deserializing request data into the appropriate parameters or model properties without the need for explicit binding. Second, using explicit binding can lead to errors. If you explicitly bind request body parameters, you need to ensure that the binding attributes are correct. Lastly, explicit binding can be difficult to maintain. If you ever change the structure of the request body, you will need to update the binding attributes in the action method parameters. To complete this lesson, let's see the POCA object explicitly bound. When explicitly binding the model, we have two options. The first one is to bind the whole object by simply decorating the parameter with the required attribute. I will include the from query attribute, and if we press send request, we receive all properties from the explicit model binding option, which in this case is query. The second option is to decorate either one property or all properties of a class according to our requirements. In this case, I will decorate only the first parameter with from query to explicitly get its value from the query string while the auth property will be bound implicitly. Now if we send a request, we receive a reply that combines data from both raw data and query parameters, which is a combination of implicit and explicit binding. Takeaways from this lesson. First, if you have a parameter that is not explicitly bound, Netcore 7 will evaluate this first available implicit option. This applies to both single parameters and POCA objects. Second, if the parameter is not found in any of the sources and the parameter is not nullable, you may receive a binding error. And the last one, a model binding will automatically create an object of the model, whether through implicit or explicit binding. In the next lesson, we will see how to bind form fields, request body, and headers in Postman. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!